check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. Did a very clever thing of the pay-per-view. They have that area where the fans show up to get autographs. Yeah, they show up, you know, hours before the show. Oh, here comes the bus. Oh, man, look, it's Tangaloa. Maybe I'll sign my thing. Filthy are hours, bus? hours in advance. And then, you know, they show up. Like, they leave the show early so they can stand there to see people leaving. So uh, they were in that area, and they shot an angle with Cody and Kevin. And so all these fans get their phones out, and so they ended up with multiple footage all over the place from fans. It was very clever. And uh, Kevin Owens turned on Cody. Wow, pro wrestling. Beat him up. They didn't have to do it in the arena where the fans would cheer Kevin Owens for doing a turn. Did it in the back. And uh, he has betrayed Cody Rhodes. I liked it. I pointed this out on Twitter on the Mid-Atlantic Pod account a couple weeks ago. Uh, they had the Andersons and Tully Blanchard beating up Sam Houston in the parking lot. And they have to cut away because Dusty and Magnum were up doing the announcing on the match. And that's where Sam's friends were. They made sure they were away. And he was out in the parking lot and they beat him up and they have to rush out there. And it's the fans losing their minds, going crazy, talking about it was Oli. Oli was the first one out. And it was like, how great is this? There was no music that hit. There was no obvious signs. Perfect. That's what it used to be. Now, in this day and age, obviously, you can't do that. Nobody believes Kevin Owens is beating up Cody Rhodes in the parking lot for real. That type of thing only happens down in Mexico. But, like, here you can't. But fans, more than ever, think they're part of the show and want to be part of the show. Let them be part of the show. That was a great way to go ahead and do that. It's just a very simple, old-school thing with a new twist. I thought that was good. And we had the return of The Rock. Showed up after the main event and just counted one, two, three. Broke the uh, sound scale. Everybody's trying to figure out what that means. I think it just meant he pinned Cody. Because he did. The night before WrestleMania. It's, Beat him one, two, Ali three. the family gave him a belt. Yeah, they sure did. So he totally didn't create that for himself. That was given to him by the Ali family. I actually believe they may have given that to him. Oh, will you stop? But the point of this is, he's got his, his belt. and I don't think he's going to be on Raw tonight. I think that he pretty much said, you know, things haven't been going... There's been a lot of BS going on in the last six months, he said. And I'll tell you when I'm ready for you to know. So it was just a thing for the 16,000 crazy fans that paid preposterous money for the show. And boy, did they appreciate it. They got their money's worth. They were screaming top you of their know, lungs for this guy. Dusty Rhodes on steroids type of story when it comes to... They brought a, brought a lot up about the last Battle of Atlanta and things that took place in Atlanta, including Dusty Rhodes being locked in cages and being attacked by the Four Horsemen or the Andersons back in the day. Can you imagine a scenario where it's all of the Tongans and all of the Samoans locked in a place with Cody, thinking that he's got some sort of backup and they all massacre him? I'm looking forward to that one day. We had uh, CM Punk beating Drew McIntyre in a Hell in a Cell match. Great match. Double juice. 16 staples for poor Drew. Probably the Ouch. best WWE match of the entire year, I would think. It was fun. I'm trying to think sure. of one Not better. Not for them, maybe, but... But it was, uh, it was awesome. So uh, Punk got the win. And that appears to be the end of the feud. So maybe uh, got to go him and Gunther next, perhaps. We shall find out more tonight, I presume. But yeah, the blood is back. The blade is back. Well, although so a, not in the no. case of Drew McIntyre, yeah. the sharp edge of the toolbox is back. Anytime you hear Staples got involved, it's usually not a blade. It was something else that did it. And I don't know what match you're going to talk about next, but I'm happy. Punk and Drew was drawn out for everything they had to deal with when it came to Punk's injuries and dragging it out. I thought they did a masterful job. I think Drew McIntyre is arguably the wrestler of the year. I think you can make a case for that, how great personality-wise and in the ring that he's been the entire year. But I'm happy that feud is over, and I'm happy that it looks like the Damian Priest-Finn Balor feud is over because... 
Damian Priest, who did have his title reign kind of overshadowed by everything that was taking place with the Judgment Day. Like, it's time for this guy to move on and get into no, something else. There's no way Priest and, and Finn is over. Because, See, I don't like that. Well, the all. problem is the Liv and Rhea thing isn't over because we got a, a lame finish can, there. But, they're clearly doing Judgment that. Day and the new, uh, whatever they're called, the Terror Twins. I guess. That one continues on. But the thing is with Dom and Rhea, you can do that and slide that over. And you also have Raquel Rodriguez being involved where that also takes some of the attention away from the Terror Twins aspect of it and you can kind of slide them away and slide Damien into something else. It's not like they can't interact on the show or anything like that. This person here says, funny how nobody is all angry about the toolbox versus AEW's shaved chairs. Well, maybe because one of them was an accident and the other yeah. was done on purpose. That's What's kind that of a mean? big difference there. Really? It's... And by the way, as far as those staples, have you ever seen Punk Gig? It's God, yeah, it's probably need deep. staples for that. This guy takes a thing, and instead of just like going like this or whatever, he goes, eh, 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 and he hits his head like it was ridiculous. I just hurt my own head doing that, by the way. That's Didn't some people use a take toolbox. Drugs. Other people poke themselves in that. What can you do? Nia Jackson Bailey somehow. for the women's title sucked. <laughs> Worst WWE pay per view match probably since the Hell in a Cell with the Fiend and Seth Rollins, which was five years ago, I think yesterday, maybe today. Tiffany looks like a walking action figure. She really does. Who? Tiffany. They all do. Well, I do you know. watch the show? <laughs> Especially her. My God, with the hat and the briefcase and everything. Yeah, this match was terrible. Well, it was back to the old Naya. Hey, well, look, Raquel. Unless Rodriguez. you're filthy, then you can blame Bailey. Well, that's no God. His queen Naya Jax, but I'm happy Raquel Rodriguez is back. It was a lot to get to that. But that in Rhea is going to be good, and her just being there. Get, and look, you can get Dom out of the mix of that, too, at least a little bit, because you have both Rhea, and, or I'm sorry, you have Liv and Raquel Rodriguez battling up against uh, Rhea. The Finn Balor-Damian Priest match, it was fine. It was slightly better than a Raw main event. Three and a quarter star match. Priest ended up hitting South Heaven for the pin after everybody tried to interfere. It was fine. Liv and Rhea with Dom in the shark cage. The wrestling, I thought, was fine. The booking was stupid. And the worst part of the booking... It's a shark cage. It's not... These referees are made to look so stupid in every company. This is not they a said, WWE thing. They, and they set it up before the match with this, too. Every really single company. This. So, God, first Dom is in the shark cage, and he manages to get the shark cage open, and then this idiot falls out... <laughs> Like, it's not even Rhea threw something and he fell out. He just, like, looked down and, oh, he falls out like an idiot. <laughs> He's hanging by his foot. And then these two WWE employees, they go over and, like, it's like my landscapers. They're just like, hmm, god dang, that tree's way up there. What should we do? They're just, like, looking at him. I'm like, he's hanging by his leg. I mean, what do you got to look at? Get the guy down or put him back in. So they're doing that. And then Rhea goes to the referee in the ring and she goes, I got to handle something. I'll be back. And the ref's like, you've earned it. I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? She goes, starts beating this guy with a stick. No DQ, no count out, nothing. And then, uh, and then out comes Raquel Rodriguez. She attacks Rhea for the disqualification. Now, apparently the report's out that this was supposed to be like a pinfall. <laughs> well, maybe don't attack Rhea right in front of the referee. I guess this referee felt he had to make a call or something. I don't know what happened. It doesn't matter. It wouldn't have made any of this any better or worse. Well, she didn't earn it. The the It was just <laughs> dumb. Well, look, it, l let me try to shoot him some bail a little bit. In this. Oh, please. Not, not, for the, not for the story itself, but the fact that before the match, they made sure to point the camera at the referee who had a refer's eye camera on, the old whatever the refer cam the Yuji Shimada from Pride used to wear. And Corey Graves is talking about the fact that this ref is kind of an idiot. So I at least they had enough self-awareness to go, okay, there's going to be some stupid stuff here, including the two guys watching Dom upside down as Corey is yelling at him, help him. Like, so they at least try to cover up their bases a little bit. But I guess if you have to do that, maybe you shouldn't have done it in the first place. And then Roman Reigns and Cody versus Solo and Fatu. 
This was a WWE Bloodline main event. It went a long time early, just by the numbers, and then the last few minutes were very good as we got all of the near falls and the kickouts and the run-ins and the return of Jimmy Uso, who has aligned himself with Roman Reigns. Roman speared Solo, pinned him. This has to be the end of this Solo thing, at least in terms of, uh, you know. Big in the mix. Him being in the title picture. It's it's time for the next guy, which would be Jacob Fatu. Who's and then the eventually US title? Roman it's Reigns. LA Knight, right? L.A. Knight is the U.S. champion. L.A. Knight Which, by the way, hey, front page, who wrote that article crediting everybody under the sun for A.J.'s injury, except the guy that first reported it? The wrestling Me! Oh. Me! Uh, Yeah, he got hurt. Hurt himself on a high cross catch. It was brutal. No, what's brutal is if it's a ligament injury, and if he tore a ligament or something like that, like... That just sucks because not only is it painful and he keeps you out for a while, it's really annoying too. Yeah, I hope that. I mean, I hope he's all right. Just came back, first match back, hurt himself on a fluke. So I know, like, you know, he probably thought, "Oh man, do I still need to be doing this or whatever?" But it was a total fluke thing. Just their timing was a little bit off. Their positioning was a little bit off. His foot went underneath him, and could happen to anybody at any time. I blame NXT. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.